friends, you're watching another Lo-Fi Let's Play with Lee Alexander. Got something a little bit special for you guys today. It is the 1986 game from Lucasfilm, based on a popular movie that I know a lot of us uh, loved when we were kids, called Labyrinth. Um, I really wish I could get the audio for you right now because, uh, as you know, uh, Labyrinth the film starred David Bowie and he also soundtracked the film and uh, the uh, the game opens with an absolutely wonderful rendering of uh, the theme Underground from Labyrinth. Uh, so this game is kind of interesting. It begins with a text portion. Um, I think that's kind of cool uh, because it has a... Uh, it has a uh, sort of interface that I haven't seen before in terms of menu option selection, but I also think it's a sort of a way to uh, separate the world of imagination from the world of the game. Uh, I'm going to take you inside this special and virtually unplayable little gem today. Um, let's say, what is my name? Lee. Oh, um, I think it's this one. And my favorite color, my favorite color is green. Um, I'm actually told that what you select here has an impact not only on your avatar, but on the uh, gameplay. So standing on the sidewalk on the east side of a city block, it's dark and raining. There is a cigar store here. A white owl is flapping about. Get it? White owl cigars? All right, uh, where could we go? Um, let's go home. You're at home, sitting in front of the TV. There is a TV dinner here. There's also a combination video recorder and camera here. It's like a square in the 1980s here, aren't we? Can we have the camcorder? Thanks. Could we eat our dinner? You eat part of the dinner and feel sick to your stomach. Um, yeah, TV dinners are not very good. I think I'd like to complain. Well, no one forced you to eat it, that's true. Uh, so, shall we continue? Let's go outside. Uh, we're back at the cigar store. Uh, let's head north. There is a beggar standing against the wall. He gently rattles his cup in your direction. Let's be generous to the beggar. We happen to have a nickel here in our inventory, as you can see from this menu. Uh, let's give him a nickel. The beggar winks at you and says, Jaggies. Hmm, might be a code word for later. Maybe a reward for our generosity. Uh, let's see. We're back at the cigar store, even though we went east. Um, we don't want to go east because there's lots of nondescript streets. Let's continue south. I learned the word nondescript from this game, actually. Uh, I found it sort of Im intimidating when I was young, you know, not, not wanting to go to the nondescript streets when you're in the rain and in the dark in a text-only interface. A little bit creepy. Ah, you are standing on the south side of a city block. It is dark and raining. There are movie posters on the wall. There are two posters on the wall. One of them is for the movie Labyrinth, starring David Bowie, produced by George Lucas, directed by Jim Henson. So already we know that um, we aren't so much acting out the plot of the film Labyrinth, which um, begins with a young Jennifer Connelly as Sarah rehearsing um, perhaps a play or a piece of literature that she enjoys in the park with her dog, but you're playing as someone who actually wants to go see the movie Labyrinth, which is kind of meta, I think. Uh, the other option is the elephant movie. Uh, I don't really know who Adam Brait is, perhaps an employee of the studio at the time. Uh, interesting. Okay. Well, I'd like to go see a film. How about you guys? Let's see. Where is the theater? There it is. There is a movie theater here. It's dark and raining. We'll enter the theater. You are standing in front of the ticket counter in the theater lobby. The ticket girl asks for five dollars. There are two large doors in front of you and you can smell popcorn inside. All right, let's give her some money. Got a ticket. And now we can enter the theater. Um, in the lobby of the movie theater, there's a popcorn stand against the north wall. Um, let's say we go get some popcorn. You know, I like the fact that the movie ticket also cost $5. I wish you could go see a movie for $5 today. Let's find out how much the popcorn costs. Today it would be another $10. Um, but uh, let's give a dollar bill. The woman takes your two dollars. See, that's pretty cheap. Places a box of cold, oh, gives you a box of cold popcorn and places two quarters and change on the counter. Accidentally drops a nickel on the floor by your feet. Put your change in your pocket and you have picked up the nickel without the woman noticing you. Lucky us. Um, I wonder which theater uh, Labyrinth can be seen at. Let's, let's try the East Theater. Oh, you enter a small empty theater, find a seat and sit down. The lights dim, the curtain parts, and the movie begins. A herd of elephants sweep majestically across the plain. Um, you know, I feel bad for Adam Brayton and his elephant film, but I don't think this is what we came to do. Uh, so, uh, let's go west. 
and let's join the South, the Southeron Theater. There we go. You enter a large packed theater. After looking for a while, you find a seat next to a very attractive boy. Oh, I guess it's making some presumptions about me based on the sex that I entered in the movie in the beginning of the game. And we immediately strike up a friendly conversation. You know, I like a friendly conversation. That could be okay. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a friendly conversation with this guy. Um, can we talk? Nope. Okay, well, let's just hang in there then. You're in a dark theater with a cute boy next to you. A teenage girl with greasy hair pulled to the side in two ponytails, wearing a Worldcon 81 t-shirt and an iGrok Spock button, taps you on the shoulder. She begins talking. You probably haven't seen this film before. I'll tell you about it. Uh-oh. Looks like she's going to get in the way of my conversation with a cute boy. So this is an interesting conundrum. You know, because if we're playing this game, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I have a lot of empathy for this uh, teenage fan who uh, doesn't quite fit in uh, her 81 t-shirt. I was born in 81. You know, maybe I should, should be nice to her and we should make friends. But at the same time, you know, I, I also want to choose the cute boy. She says there's this deep psychological meaning at all. I mean, the spiritualism is so awesome. I've seen it 83 times. Yeah, um, and now she wants my popcorn. Look, um, lady, this is my let's play. I'll, com I'll explain the meaning of labyrinth. Thank you. I complain. The teenage girl looks at you like she's heard that remark before, says, oh, wow, I'm sorry. I won't bother you anymore. The cute boy says, thanks. I was starting to climb the walls. Oh, and the movie's beginning. What could be happening? I'm, I'm actually really excited to... Uh, to see a movie within a 1986 game about a movie. Um, so what's gonna, oh my God, it's David Bowie as Jareth and he's talking to us, you, he says. <gasps> me? Oh my God, he's speaking directly. He could be talking to me. Oh my God. You, Lee, oh my God. Look at, I'm, I'm really actually moved by this, having um, Jareth on the screen speaking to me. He's been watching me. He knows all there is to know about me. Um, did you see that he donated some change to the, the beggar because, um, you know, that means that I might be a nice person, potentially dateable by you. Um, he knows my weaknesses, so he probably, he, he knows that, that I have a crush on him. Um, you know, what little girl from the 80s did not have a crush on David Bowie as Jareth from Labyrinth? Uh, yep, these weaknesses have made you my thrall, he says. To regain your freedom, you must vanquish me in my castle at the heart of the labyrinth. Okay, I, I will, yep, I think he's asking me out, don't you? Yeah, I think we should uh, visit the heart of the labyrinth and, and, and see what, what, what that's all about. When I was in first grade, I had a friend named Ashley, and, um, you know, I hope that she was all right, because, uh, oh, we have 13 hours to accomplish our goal, else will be lost forever in the labyrinth. I, I hope there was nothing, um, I genuinely hope there wasn't anything uh, serious going on in Ashley's life because she, she had an awfully prescient awareness of sexuality for a six-year-old and she used to watch Labyrinth with me and her favorite thing to do at that point in time was always to uh, pause the film when uh, David Bowie's bulge was on the screen. Um, and you know, maybe that, that's normal little girl stuff. I, I was confused. I didn't know why his bulge and his leggings were so exciting. I mean, now I do. Those costumes in that game were fantastic, weren't they? All right, so this actually has a weird, weird control scheme. It, it's like ILMJ uh, portion of the keyboard, but this is me in, in my green shirt that I selected, and I'm going to enter the labyrinth, and uh, the doors are going to shut behind me. And if you walk either to the right or the left of the screen, and you can, interestingly, you can walk on forever and encounter nothing. And uh, it never loops, never loops back. Once you realize there's nothing, you do have to walk back to the front entrance. So here we are, this filmic marquee tells us we're in the labyrinth. And um, I'm going to take a little walk with you. And uh, OK, so we could call for Jareth. Need help, do you? Too bad. OK, well, I don't need help. Let's just take a walk here in the labyrinth for a while, and as we walk uh, through this slimy brick hallway that you might remember from the opening of the film, Passing Some Graffiti, I'm going to talk to you about this movie and uh, how much it means to me. Um, interestingly, the plot of this film is actually uh, Sarah is busy playing pretend, and uh, she's not really keen on fulfilling her responsibilities of babysitting her younger brother that night for her father and her stepmother as um, I think her mother who uh, it's indicated she's an actress has has passed away 
and uh, what is this? And uh, so you know, Sarah is a is a a girl who's lost her first mom and uh, is interested in toys, dreaming, stuffed animals. Even though you know we can we can say perhaps she's getting a bit old uh, for that and is resisting the process of growing up and, and claiming responsibility, instead preferring to dwell in the fantasy worlds of her imagination. So. Uh, I take a rock the size of a softball. That might be useful later. So uh, when Sarah wishes for the Goblin King, this figure of her dreams of both terror and wonder, she wishes for the Goblin King to take her little brother away. And uh, surprisingly, he does. He comes along and, and kidnaps the baby, at which, which point she realizes, you know, she, um, she very much regrets what she's done. And she has to enter the world of the labyrinth to get her little brother back and to challenge the control that these fictions have over her life. Um, I think it's all very metaphorical. Um, the Goblin King is, is someone she dreamed of, and uh, he loves her just as much as he fights her, because uh, as the ruler of her safe place and the ruler of her dream world, you know, he wants to continue sheltering her in fantasy forever. Um, can we take this log? I wonder why we'd want this. So I like the part that, you know, he loves her just as much as he fights her. He's fighting her to keep her escape, her, the world of her escapism alive, I believe. Uh, yep, now we have a large heavy log. Um, that is why he, uh, in the final scenes when she's able to get her brother back by declaring that the Goblin King no longer has any power over her, he seems so wonderfully heartbroken that, you know, all he ever tried to do was to preserve and protect her, and she fought and resisted him. My favorite thing about the ending of the Labyrinth film is that, you know, she's able to rescue her brother and everything's okay, but the lesson of the film is not that it's time to put away childish things. At the end of the film, all of the figures from her dream world, from her Labyrinth, come and greet her in her room, and you realize that actually all the stuffed animals in her room have analogs that appeared in the Labyrinth, you know, they're, everything she had a toy of appeared in her dream world. And, um, you know, they always tell her, if you need us, um, you can call for us. And she says, I will. You know, sometimes I will need you. And I think that's absolutely a beautiful message that, you know, you, you never have to put away the world of your dreams. You never have to put away the realm of your imagination. You just have to know when it's time to, to live in the real world and then, and then when it's not. So here's Sarah's friend Hoggle um, that we, uh, we know from the film, the, the, the grumpy goblin that sometimes helps her and, and that is compelled by her desire for friendship. Um, why don't we have a talk with Hoggle? Can we do that? Can we talk to Hoggle? Manicure? Maybe let's offer Hoggle a manicure. You know, I think manicure is a verb that's applicable in a hedge maze. Um, nothing happens. <laughs> uh, let's have a talk. No, I don't want to insult, don't want to hit, eat, drop, congratulate. Yeah, let's give him a nice compliment because I like him. Oh, you want something, do you? That won't work. Okay. Let's ask him for help. What's the point? You won't ever find your way out. Well, I see some graffiti on the wall here that says go through the door, so perhaps I shall. Uh, let's try to touch the wall because nothing is as it seems in this place and nothing is fair. That's sort of the message of the labyrinth. And as you see, that graffiti that we stepped through is indeed the door, uh, the brick hallway. Interesting. So yes, yeah, Sarah frequently complains when she's in the labyrinth that nothing is fair, and uh, you know, child, children always complain. Oh, a goblin is coming. We'd better run. Children always complain that things are not fair, and that's just part of growing up. I think. Let's see if we can get away from that guy by uh, opening this door. What if he catches me? He may. He may well catch me. I'm a little anxious right now. Well, we can go back to philosophizing later. Ooh. Oh gosh, let's run. Oh, we escaped the goblin. That was actually a, a pretty tense moment. Uh, and uh, if you look at actually this area at the bottom here is our map. It shows us objects of interest that may appear. It shows us doors and uh, moving dots on here would be uh, other goblins that we've, we've got to look out for. Um, yeah, so I think the labyrinth is a metaphor for Sarah confronting her inability to put away childish things, and for me, as a 32-year-old video games journalist, I find this a, a really important message um, and a really touching story. Uh, my favorite part of the film is uh, 
Let's see, what have we got here? A luscious, fully ripened peach. Well, okay, speaking of a peach, I have two favorite parts. Um, at one point in the film, um, Jareth gives Sarah a peach to try to make her forget her dreams. And uh, what he offers her, instead of the maturity that she really needs, is a fantasy of adulthood by... Um, as represented by a masked ball. She finds herself literally in a crystal ball uh, in a beautiful white dress and she's waltzing with the Goblin King as, you know, sort these sort of eyes wide shut type, uh, slightly sexualized masked figures alternately court and threaten her. And I think that's just amazing if you think about that's what a little girl her age might, might believe adulthood looks like. Um, and interestingly, in her room she has, uh, she's later seen to have a beautiful snow globe with a figure inside that looks like her mother. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of meaning in that, in that film. Uh, let's see what, this looks like a vending machine. Um, let's see. Oops, sorry. Maybe I pressed the wrong button really quick. Let's make sure the screen remains centered so that you can see all the wonderful things. Um, use, uh, let's put a nickel in, see if that does anything. Nothing happens. Perhaps I've got to be facing the machine uh, a little better. Um, I also greatly enjoy the part of the film uh, where after she has the hallucination of the peach, she, uh, she finds her way into something that looks like a simulacrum of her childhood room, only to find that it's actually buried in a junk shop, and uh, she, there's all these junk ladies around, and they're burdened with with junk and toys and dolls and teddy bears and and uh you know the relics of their lives that have buried them and uh let's try to use a quarter on this vending machine and uh hmm she uh maybe i can insert i think that's a verb that i can use yeah i can i can do that let's try inserting a nickel and uh, the job of these junk ladies in the story is to encourage Sarah to stay uh, in this childhood room buried in junk. Um, and uh, it's sort of chilling when you think about it. If she did choose to stay there, she might become a, a junk lady herself, burdened by um, objects that represent feelings. Uh, oh, the coin jammed, so we've lost our nickel. I wonder if using the quarter would help. Maybe. Nope. I guess uh, we've been conned by a busted vending machine. But no matter, there's, a, there's an open door up ahead. We can continue our journey through the labyrinth today. Yeah, so uh, she challenges the junk lady. And uh, as the junk lady is trying to pile her with toys and teddy bears and, and her childhood objects, um, Sarah eventually, it's a piece of lipstick that she discovers. She, she finds a lipstick. And uh, I think that makes her start to think about her mother or to think about womanhood. And to realize that the toys are only toys. Um, did something come out of the vending machine? Yep, looks like it did. Um, what could we take here from this? Uh, if you see, the objects don't quite line up perfectly. Which sometimes makes it a little confusing. Uh, yeah, this game itself is, is awfully confusing. Even reading a walkthrough, I, uh, I had trouble understanding. You now own a bottle of Venn perfume, known far and wide for its intensely sweet smell. In fact, the label says, the sweetest smell in the world. Um, if you've seen the movie, uh, you might be able to predict uh, what that might be used for uh, in, in this uh, game. But let's walk on, shall we? Hope we don't encounter any goblins or any traps. Um, you know, when I was a little girl, I obviously I hadn't thought much about the metaphor and the meaning of labyrinth. In fact, the movie was a little scary for me as a child. I remember watching it. Uh, it was on television, and I was I was at my grandmother's house with my family, and it must have been playing on HBO. And uh, I recall feeling quite scared of it, and as if I'd witnessed something a bit dark and a bit adult. It's a crystal ball, and as you know, uh, the character of Jareth is frequently seen playing with crystals, I'm, um, you know, using some hand-eye coordination, and uh, often his crystal just turns out to be a soap bubble, which is, is sort of interesting as well. Um, so I think this movie is an incredibly important essay on dreams and on particularly on girlhood. Um, this game is not a particularly strong essay on anything, but uh, wandering its corridors and thinking about imagination in childhood is, is kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, Let's continue. Let's see if the oh, there's something in this hall. Could it be a goblin? Oh, I think he he is pursuing me. Um, 
You know, why don't we see what happens when fate catches up to you? Uh, we're getting close to the end of our time together today, so why don't we... Why don't we confront it head on? Why don't we show that we can handle a world that isn't fair? Why don't we show that we're ready to deal with our fate um, in this labyrinth of Jareth? All together now, we greet him. And uh, we fall through a trapdoor into an oubliette. And uh, here we might be we might be doomed to stay forever. Um, oubliette, of course, means forget. Um, but there are some things you can do. I'll just show you how to get out of the oubliette in case you ever choose to play your, this game yourself. Um, uh, as always, all our games that we've been playing so far are on uh, virtualapple.org. If you'd like to try them yourself, they're all sorted alphabetically, and it just has a simple in-browser Java player. You don't even need to worry about the emulation yourself. Oop, unfortunately, we've spent all of our change. Um, what happens when we eat a peach? I wonder if we go to a world of dreams. Gosh, the music in that film was so good as well. David Bowie is such a talented man. Oh, God. And, uh, did it kill us? You eat the peach and fall into a deep sleep. Dreaming together of dancing in ballrooms with adults. We lose an hour. Ah, oh, we only had 13 hours in which to solve the labyrinth. Um, unfortunately, Labyrinth is one of those movies that, uh, I know from back to front. And, um, one of my favorite, uh, quotes from David Bowie in there is when he challenges her and says, you have 13 hours in which to solve the labyrinth before your baby brother becomes one of us forever. Such a pity. And my friends, it is a pity, maybe, that we won't be able to get any further in this game today together. But, um, thanks for tuning in and, uh, reminiscing about one of my favorite 80s movies with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Lo-Fi Let's Plays. Um, if you want to talk about it, you can get with me at Lee Alexander uh, on Twitter or Lee at LeeAlexander.net. And uh, previous installments in my Let's Play series are available on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this video, please consider sharing it and recommending it to your friends. Um, it's fun to do uh, these, and I'd like uh, a lot of people to keep watching and enjoying them. Uh, have a wonderful week. Thank you for tuning in.